Why do pilots do that? Like every pilot does that. Is that a pilot thing? Do they train them to do that? What you mean? When they be like, we are about to uh, take flight and be, then. They be thinking. <laughs> yeah, but they all do it. Because they be drunk. <laughs> they all do it. Uh, They're like, we're going to have a safe flight and uh, we're going to buckle up and take off in about five minutes or and then uh, 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 weather is going to be pretty clear today. It's going to be cloudy. Hopefully there's no turbulence. Uh, uh, But uh, we'll be uh, departing the gate in about five minutes. We're just waiting for the sun and back to clear up uh, overnight. We arrived uh, f- 15 minutes early. We had a safe flight. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, this is your captain speaking. Uh, we got a little bit of turbulence and just uh, just buckle up. Have a seat. We're going through this. Uh, <laughs> like, what? Any views or opinions expressed in this podcast are not the Just views and opinions of I every say, podcaster. Don't take it literal, dog. I'm not that one. Please remain quiet while we read the disclaimer, <laughs> just don't, so that just, there's no mis- don't, no, mo- no misunderstanding don't or confusion. The views <laughs> and opinions expressed on this podcast are not that of those of everyone sitting at the table. Mm. They are simply the opinions and views of the very person that speaks them. This podcast is not responsible for any type of personal offensiveness that may arise from comments or topics discussed on the podcast if you have a problem with it there is a button somewhere down at the bottom i'm not sure exactly which corner but you can simply unfollow thank you for your viewership the gemini music group Woo! and it feel good to be black all right and we are back <laughs> hey there my- Hey there. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. Yeah, I like that no, one. I don't. Say hey there. Hey there, motherfuckers. Oh, hit them with the country. Hey there, motherfuckers. <laughs> Freaking niggers. <laughs> <laughs> How you motherfuckers doing today? That's great. <laughs> Ooh, that's a round of applause. <laughs> and we are back. Did we put the little? I just added my we. I'm like I'm we. I'm I'm just here. I'm Did sorry. I had the the little act? I didn't do the act thingy. No, it's in there somewhere. I will probably chop it and and put add it, it in there. Yeah. Somewhere. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I am that nigga trend for the people that don't know. I'm a part of the I Say Your podcast, um, Gemini Music Group, and I'm also a, a singer, songwriter, rapper, man of uh, many flavors or colors or one of the two. I'm just here. This, I'm in the background. Um, I'm going to shut up now. This is not my show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I said I wasn't going to do this. But I'm doing it. It's business. Business, business, business. Oh, well, in the meantime, uh, let me tell you what, guys what I got going on, okay? So, uh, yeah, you know... Uh, I smoke dope sometimes. No, you don't. <laughs> I just found out the difference between all the drugs because I, I didn't know. I just would call everybody a crackhead, right? No matter what yeah, differences. drug that they use, I just was like, you're a crackhead because I'm not about to determine what drug is what. I didn't know it was a difference between crack, uh, cocaine, cocaine mm-hmm. and dope. Mm-hmm. I thought they was all the same drug. Not because we got one. One you snort. Mm-hmm. Uh, one you can stab yourself with. Mm-hmm. But the other one you cook. You can cook on a spoon, like for example, you put. A, I put thought fire that's the one it. you stab with. They yeah, said right, one. Right, right, right. They said one is heroin. I said what? Yeah, the dope is heroin. Dope is heroin. Yeah, dope is heroin. I said my daddy said I use dope. They said wait what? <laughs> I said, because I, I knew I was offended for a reason when he said it, because it, I think I was like, I think I was like 19, I think I was like 19 or maybe 20, and I just moved back in with my dad because he had put me out. I think that was the first time he put me out. He put me out a lot of times, y'all. 
And yeah, let me come back home. And I had just had my son, and I had asked his crackhead girlfriend at the time, yeah, fucking bitch, you're a crackhead. Uh, I asked her to watch my son because I was going to go take a ride with my friends or whatever. My son probably was about three months, three months or so. And I said I wanted to take a ride with my friends because I hadn't been I hadn't been outside in over a year. I was pregnant. I was homeless on and off. Like, cause my daddy put me out when I, when he found out I was pregnant. Um, I stayed with my cousin. Then when I came, I was staying with my cousin on an air mattress, but I ended up being sick and was in a hospital for like five days. So my aunties and all of them came to the hospital. They was trying to figure out uh, what was wrong with me and why I wasn't I staying with my dad. I said, he put me out. So then it was like, that's just, you know, it's, it's like a Samuel curse or whatever that the men in our family is just fucked up. So I guess when they decided they was going to help me, my daddy didn't want nobody helping me. So he was like, you can come back home under these stipulations. So he let me come back home. He didn't even live there. He rented out the house to all these different people. And I couldn't get food stamps because technically it was still his house and I was still living underneath my father's roof. So I couldn't get food stamps. I didn't eat for days. I didn't eat. The only time I ate is when my dad's ex-wife would take me to get groceries. And even then she couldn't really help me out too, too much. My stepmom, she couldn't help me out too, too much because she was in another relationship taking care of that household. And so she would help me out when she could or whatever the case may be. But anyway, fast forward to uh, when I had my son. So my dad moves back in with his girlfriend. He put the people, you know, that was living there out or they moved out or whatever the case may be. And I went to go smoke with my friends and I didn't even really plan on smoking for real, for real, because I really didn't like being high. Like being high was like the weirdest feeling ever. Like I think the first time I got high, I just laughed and couldn't stop laughing. And I hated that for me. I really did because I laughed until I fell asleep because I couldn't stop laughing. And I just ate everything in the house and it just being high really wasn't fun for me at all. I don't like I get it for y'all because they said it's like a mental thing. Like people that actually have like a mental disorder really shouldn't be smoking. I have a mental disorder. What is it? None of your damn business. And I wasn't supposed to be smoking. I just laugh, laugh, laugh. Can you hear that? You can hear that. You can hear that, right? Yeah. That's that's my uh laundry facility. I thought it was this. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh, it's my defect. laundry facility. It's the uh something wrong with it. it. It every other month it breaks down or whatever, but it's like literally <laughs> right across the hallway. I got to go somewhere else to wash clothes today. It's stupid. But anyway, so anyway, fast forward. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't really like being high. So my home girl was like, I she told me she gets high all the time. So me her and my homeboy and his homeboy, we went to go hot box in the car somewhere. <laughs> and I didn't even hit it. I, matter of fact, I'm lying. I did hit it. I hit it like two times because I really, like I said, I didn't want to really be high. Like, But because they're hot boxing in the car, I'm still getting super fucking high and anyway. And we're in the car, hot boxing, high as a boot. We go back to the crib. I'm not... I'm still acting pretty fucking normal. And I'm like, bitch, take your ass downstairs so my daddy don't know that we high. Because I don't, you know what I'm saying? I said, you know, I'm going to get my son in a little bit once the high come down because I don't really want to handle my son. I'm going to go downstairs. So when we go in this motherfucking house, everybody go the fuck downstairs in the basement. Like, go, go, do not collect 200. Go straight to the motherfucking basement. Don't say shit to the parents, Right. Everybody understood the assignment. We all went downstairs. But my homegirl decided she wanted to stay upstairs and talk to a motherfucker. It's always that one. It's always that one. So she upstairs talking and talking and talking. and Next thing I know, bloom, bloom, bloom. 
mind you, we downstairs in the basement. We like that's the door. That's the door. It ain't the door. What is that? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. We like what the fuck was that? <laughs> High as a boot because we just hear a noise and we just go back to our regular base. Like, so then my dad girlfriend yelled downstairs, "Come get your friend. She on that shit." <laughs> so we like, wait, what? So we looking around like, wait, this bitch ain't come downstairs. Oh fuck! So I go upstairs and I'm like, bitch, what the fuck? She said your friend is on that shit. I know when somebody's on that shit because my daughter's is on that shit. I'm like, bro, you want that shit? She said, no, I just fainted. I said, you just randomly fucking fainted in front of everybody? I told your dumb ass to come the fuck downstairs. She said, no, I just fainted. I'm fine. I'm cool. I said, okay. All right. Come downstairs. She said, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. So she talking to her son. Her son started tripping. Her son back then was just a big ass crybaby. All he did was fucking cry. Just... He ain't want nobody touching him. He ain't want nobody looking at him. He ain't want shit but his mama. All he did was cry. So she gets up. She said, I'm going to go use the bathroom real quick. She get up. Mind you, I'm high. <laughs> she get up, and then she fall. I'm looking like, bitch, is you playing with me right now? She just passed the fuck out. Her son on her, trying to wake her up, trying to get her up. So I'm slapping. I'm like, bitch, stop playing. Get the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, stop playing with me. Get the fuck up. She think you on that shit. Get up. Just smacking her. <laughs> like, are you cool? Then her eyes is like rolling in the back of her head. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? So she's screaming. My, my dad girlfriend at the time was screaming, she got to get the fuck out my house. She on that shit. I won't allow it in my house. I'm looking at her like, bitch, <laughs> you a visitor just like she is. You this ain't, this ain't your shit, but okay. So she gets up. She's like, what, I fell asleep again? Bitch, stop playing with me. Like, what is you doing? <laughs> I told you to go downstairs. She said, I think I'm going to go home. I said, how the fuck you going to get there? You ain't drive here. So then we got her back in the chair, and then she passed out again. I said, oh, hell no. So I called 911. I called 911 because I don't know what the fuck wrong with her. So in the midst of me calling 911, my homeboy was like, yeah, we out. Uh, We got too much drugs on us. We the fuck out. I said, hey, I respect it. Go ahead. Get home safe. Text me. Let me know everything. Cool. And they left, whatever. And then my dad, girlfriend, just yelling, 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 screaming, screaming, screaming that she on that shit. Da 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 da. So the ambulance come. I had to call her Wait, mom. The what came? You know I can't say that word. <laughs> just say it with her. Ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> the ambulance. The ambulance came. Ambulance. They came. Checked her heart rate. They said her heart rate dropped and stopped a few times. I'm like, what? <laughs> off of, off of what? And I'm and they was like, did you smoke anything? Did you do any drugs? And da da da. So I'm looking at the bitch like, you better say no. You better fucking say no. You better say no, bitch. She said I smoked some weed. I said I should slap the fuck out of her right the fuck now, right now. Cause why would you tell them that? Then she said, did anybody else smoke? I'm looking at her like, you better not tell, bitch. You better not tell. She said, yeah, she did. I said, bitch, what? I said, no, I didn't. I didn't, no, mm -mm." They said, ma'am, I said, I'm I'm not acting how she acting. I didn't smoke. I'm fine. They looked at my pupils. They said, ma'am. I said, huh? They said, you can go to jail. I said, for what? I didn't put it to her lips. I didn't make her do it. She voluntarily did it. Since she want to be snitching and shit. So I call her mom, tell her mom, her mom screaming, cussing me out on the phone. We go to the hospital. Her mom called me every devil in the book. Mind you, my homegirl older than me. She about four, she about four or five years older than me. Maybe, maybe between two to five years older than, no, she older than me. Anyway, she older than me. (laughs) 
and I'm the devil influencing her daughter, but her daughter had a child in high school. <clears throat> but I'm influencing her daughter, and I'm the devil. But your daughter was busting that wide open at the age of 15, 16 years old. I just met her after she had the baby. But okay, if you say so, that's how I feel. But then my dad had to come get me from the hospital because I rode with her in the ambulance to go to the hospital. And then my daddy was like, uh, so-and-so, his girlfriend, told me you was smoking dope. I said, no. No, I wasn't. Daddy, no. He said, was you smoking that shit? I said, no, daddy, I wasn't smoking that shit, no. He said, you was smoking that shit. I said, daddy, I promise. He said, you had her watching your son while you was smoking dope. I said, daddy, I promise I wasn't smoking dope. I said, I don't even know what dope is, but I promise you it wasn't that. Smoking that dope. He was like, what you, what was you doing? I said, I smoked a little bit of weed. That's dope. I said, is it? Mm. I'll never do dope again. Because I thought dope was some other shit. Like, I ain't no crackhead, daddy. Like, the fuck? But then years down the line, he go, my daddy. <laughs> you want to go smoke in the backyard real quick? No, daddy, after you didn't call me a crackhead for that one time, I'll never smoke again. You called me a whole crackhead that day. Dang, daddy was smoking that dope. Daddy was smoking that dope. Daddy was smoking that dope. He was like, smoky, smoky. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even cool about it at all. When my daddy, when my daddy started smoking, he was not cool at all. He'd be like, smoky, smoky in the backyard. Smoky, smoky. <laughs> He went a little smooth. And at first, I thought it was like a setup, but he was dead ass serious. Like, he had his papers and everything and rolled up his papers. Rolled. <laughs> smoky, smoky. We're going to call this episode Smoky, Smoky. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's 17 minutes, right? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Just telling that. Just tell that story. Uh, what's it called? JoJo said, uh, she on her way. I don't know, you want to save your questions for when you got, like, more girls in there, something like that? Yeah, that's cool. And then I got a topic. The one topic I want to talk about is, like, super, super serious. And I'm not going to talk about it this episode because that's, that's going to be an episode of its own. So if you see this episode... So if you see this episode, baby, I just. So if you see this episode before I do the next one, because I'm gonna wait until I actually have a nice little panel of people. I want at least two men, two women for this one episode. Well, me and another girl and two guys for this particular episode, um, because it's not talked about enough, especially in our community. Molestation, mm. S A. Growing up. What's SA? You know we can't say the... Oh. Uh, sexual abuse? Sexual assault, sexual abuse. You're not supposed to you say You can say that. You just can't say the R one. Oh, an ape. We gonna, I want to talk about, you know, all that stuff because it's a serious topic. You know what I'm saying? Especially like the SA and the... I mean, sorry, what you said I could say it. Sexual assault and molestation growing up um, because they, they swear that only women went through it when guys went through it as well from older women, you know, but I'm not going to get too deep. I'm going to talk about that another time. I just found out I got, uh, I didn't just found out, but on my, I say your episode, I think it was 88 or something like that. Uh, Cherise said that I got groomed Mm -hmm. when I was like, nah, I ain't get groomed because the the girl was older than me, like Mm -hmm. way older than me. I'm like, nah, I ain't groomed. I wanted that. No, nigga, you was groomed. You was groomed. <laughs> you was groomed. You was groomed. I got groomed. I, it was crazy because when I was like 17, me being, you know, fast, call it what it is, I was being fast, I only liked older men. And they said because it came from, you know, not being loved by your daddy or whatever. And I'm like, but my daddy raised me. Even though my daddy raised me, my daddy... Y'all know the background. Did a, he did the best job he could do. 
I, he didn't love me the way that I felt like I should be loved. And he didn't guide me the way that I should have been guided as a young lady. So I was like, they said it's like a trauma that we just didn't know about where you looking for that love in older men that you wanted from your father. So it was like, I was looking for love from older men. So I would only talk to and date older men while I was in high school. And I remember I was uh, telling, I was on a bus. I was on a bus telling one of my stories, how I was dating this older guy. And I just, you couldn't tell me shit. I'm like, this nigga got his own crib. Okay, he owns his own business. He picked me up on his motorcycle from school. Everybody like, look, the girls on the bus is like, yes, yes. My bus driver turned around, pulled, stopped the bus and was like, uh-uh. No. And how old is he? I said, he like 30. Mm. 25, 30, one of them. Yeah, and she was funny. like, hell no. Stop that shit. Like the bus driver, because me and the bus driver was cool. Mm. Put it, I'm gonna put it like that. Me and the bus driver was cool. I loved her. We I talked to her. Um, and she looked at us as her, you know, her little babies, because she fucked with us or whatever. Mm. But she stopped that bus, but she was so pissed off to hear me, to hear me of all people, because I think she honestly, I really think she loved me the most, honestly. She did me way more favors. <laughs> than she did any of the other uh, students on the bus. Like, she would literally pull into my development that I lived in. My house was all the way in the fucking back. In the cutty up. All the way in the cutty. But I lived in, like, a cul-de-sac where you could turn around at. Mm -hmm. But uh, my shit was, like, so deep, I had to walk all the way to the end, you know, the block or whatever to catch the bus. Sometimes... Because she'll pick me up first. I'll be picked up first in the morning, but I'm dropped off last in the afternoon. So sometimes she would go up the street for me, turn around in the cul-de-sac, and drop me off in front of my house. Like, she loved me. And then, like, sometimes when I used to do my sports and stuff like that, the um, she would be the, the sports... Uh, what they, after school driver. She would be the after school bus driver sometimes. My bus stop was, if if you're from Delaware, my bus stop was off of 273, that intersection at 273 at Eagle Glen. If you from Delaware, Eagle Glen, 273, you know that road where you get ready to go to Walmart and all the other shit, at that gas station, was that Sunoco or Shell or something like Shell, that? Yeah. Uh, that would be my bus stop. I lived in Christiana Meadows off of Route Seven. What the? Fuck? <laughs> Dang! Man. So I would. You on the wrong bus? No, that's how they did the <laughs> after school did. buses. That was the closest bus. Oh, stop. after school bus. After oh, school yeah. bus. Yeah, after school bus. That would be the closest bus stop to my house. Now, granted, she couldn't do it for me every time, but for the most part, when I did, yes, I had to walk. But I would walk straight through Eagle Glen. Y'all, y'all, if you know the cutties and the walks and the shortcuts and shit, you know you can walk through Eagle Glen. I forget the other development that I walked through, but it's literally like a straight walk through, straight out to uh, and then I would have to walk through the back road or whatever to get. I don't even know if they still got the same. Uh, shortcut to walk through there anymore. I don't know. I haven't, you know, I haven't done it over twenty plus years. But I would. It take. It would take me about thirty minutes to an hour to get home sometimes after Jeez. school. But that's how dedicated I was to my sports, mm -hmm. and that's how dedicated I was to not being fucking home because I didn't want to be home. I, you know, I grew up Jehovah's Witness, so I wanted to skip as many meetings as possible. So. Sometimes, you know, it was best for me to, it, to me, that was, it was worth it to have mm -hmm. to skip the meetings. It was worth it to not have to be home because I lived in a Brady Bunch type of house. Like my house, my house was a big house. Yes. But it was, I had, uh, three stepbrothers and sisters plus me, my dad, uh, my brother, 
And my sister sometimes would come and stay with us from Baltimore. She would come, she was older, so, but sometimes she would come and stay with us. So we was literally like the Brady Bunch, three boys, three girls type of shit. And the house was always full. And I was just happy to not be home. You know what I mean? So the walk was worth it. But for the most part, she would save me for last when I would have to do the after school bus and take me to my house or at least get me close to my house so I'm not doing that whole walk. But um, neither here nor there, yeah, she was she was highly upset to hear that I was being groomed by that older man. Shout out to the bus drivers. Yeah. School bus drivers. <laughs> she, was, she was highly upset. She didn't like that. She wanted me to cut that man off immediately. I was like, I didn't do anything with him, but he has every, and I'm, and that's why I ask myself to this day, how the fuck do I love broke niggas now? Cause, <laughs> because I literally talked to older men that had their own businesses, that had cars, that had houses, that had money, that would spoil me, that would help me, they they wouldn't really necessarily one did touch me because I lied about my age to him. I lied about my age to two of them actually. Because I used to work at the Wawa. I forget what it's called now, but I used to work at the Wawa on the Route 40. And it's like a it's a different convenience store now. Across from the uh, motorcycle shop? Yeah. Okay. I, I used to yeah, work yeah. there and this guy came in. He was so fine. Oh, my God. He was so fine. He worked at Stanley Steamer. He had just got out of jail. The carpet cleaner. Woo. I hold I'm bringing back memories. Hold on. See, he could have cleaned my carpets. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to clean my carpets so bad. He was so fine. But I worked so much at Wawa, everybody thought I was 18 plus because I was there all the time time i was there past the legal nine o'clock i was there weekends i was i was always there so they just never paid it no mind and then i was like mature for mm. my age like i could have a conversation with you like i was that girl mm. i would have a conversation i was nice i was smiling i was you know what i'm saying so they thought she got to be old enough like and then i ended up getting a tattoo so they really thought I was old enough. I was like, yeah, I'm finna go over here and get a tattoo because the tattoo people thought I was 18 and older. <laughs> I got my tattoo at 16. My first tattoo at 16 because they thought, because I was always there, they thought I was 18 plus. Like, they, I was mature. I was, you know what I'm saying? I was built different. You know what I mean? So the boy from Stanley Steamer, like, he was crushing on me and I was crushing on him. And the first time he asked me, I told him how old I was, right? I said I was 16, 17 years old. And he was like, ooh, mm-mm, mm-mm. Call me when you 20 and up. I said, okay. So he would come in and just shake his head every time. Every time he seen me. And then, like, he disappeared for a while. And then maybe came back around, like, about almost a year later. And I said, I got a birthday coming up. He said, do you? Now, mind you, he ain't seen me in a minute, so he ain't. He probably ain't remember how old I told him I was the first time. He was like, how old you turning? I said, I'll be 19. He said, already? I said, mm-hmm. He said, call me when you turn 19. I said, No, I told him I was turning 18, my bad. I said I was turning 18. He was like, call me when you turn 18. I said, on my birthday? He said, on your birthday, no sooner. I said, okay. That nigga, <laughs> that nigga different. I called him. We Call went me to when the you graduate from college. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the movies. I was in love with that boy. I can't think of his name right now. But every time I seen a Stanley Steamer Byron. carpet. <laughs> I still look in vans to this day just to see if he still worked there. I, to this day. This is like how long ago? Like 10 years ago? Oh, ooh, way. 20? I, I was 18. I was actually, no, turning 17, but I lied and said I was turning 18. So it's about 15 years ago? Way more. Let's My use, daughter, 15. We use 15 for now. Um, hold up. Keep talking, keep talking. 
This was like 19... This might have been like 1999. Because I graduated 2001. Three. Mm -hmm. Three? Yeah. Three No, just three. Three. The MH. No, it says hump. Oh, that's what it says? Yeah, hump. <laughs> <laughs> the E missing. <laughs> it just said hump. <laughs> I was going to fix it, but because in the movie. Yeah, as soon as she come downstairs, I'm the, I'm the last door on the right, right? Is it the right or the left? I should have unlocked it. I should have reached over. All right, so I'm going to close this episode out in 2.5 seconds. Let me finish telling you my story. So <laughs> the bull, you know, I started liking him or whatever. He would, you know, because he was in prison. He, uh, because he was in prison, you know, like the prison people know how to draw and shit. Most of them do, not all of them, but most of them. So I had a car at the time because I told him that I got this car for my 18th birthday. I had a car. He knew what kind of car. Hey, how you doing? He had a car. He came over. No, not came over. He would come to my job, you know, and he drew me a flower on my car. Like, he didn't even tell me he was stopping by. He just came by, drew me a flower on a napkin, and, um, Wrote a cute little note inside and put it on my windshield. So when I came out, I seen it and I was just like, oh, my God. Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Why am I not dating these type of men now? Like, where are these type of men at now? But that's neither here nor there. Yes, I got groomed at 16, 17. I did lie about my age a few times. So not totally their fault. But at the same time, to the ones that did know how old I was. It was still your fault and my fault because I was being grown. I was being grown. It is what it is. I was looking for that daddy love. <laughs> All right, motherfuckers. Don't bust that night. We'll be right back. Bye. The Gemini Music Group.